Are you recording now? No, I'm not recording. Yes, I'm recording now. Go. No threatening me on video. See that, folks? She's dangerous. Okay, go ahead. You have yet to see me be dangerous, I promise. Okay, homemade turkey pot pie this time. Sometimes I do chicken. This time I'm doing turkey because I cooked turkey a few days ago and I never like to have leftovers that go unused. So what I have here, this is four cups of mixed dark and light meat. Probably a little more closer to five cups, but whatever, it's good. I've got a cup of carrots, six cups of water. Chip just came back in. So I took these carrots and I diced them, well I didn't dice them, but I sliced them kind of small because you want them to be in like bite-sized pieces. So I got about a cup of carrots. This is half of an onion. I'm just gonna put it in here. This is a Vidalia onion, like I usually use. Why do I like Vidalia onions so much? Well, number one, they have so much flavor. Number two, I have never, ever, ever shed a tear while cutting up a Vidalia onion. And that's a very good thing, right? I have about, we well, have three potatoes, medium-sized potatoes peeled. I'm gonna cut these up into chunks. Again, the bite-sized pieces, really? I, I need more and more. Okay. Meet Benjamin, everybody. A lot of times he's behind the camera and he's doing goofy stuff behind the camera. This time he just decided to get it. What are you doing? You're such a jerk. Anyway, cutting these potatoes up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put my carrots and my onions in the water. Carrots take a little bit longer than potatoes do to cook, so I'm going to put this on to boil, just on high, because you want it to get done. And um, I'll let it boil for probably eight to 10 minutes before I add the potatoes because potatoes don't take near as long as the carrots to cook. And you want them nice and soft. You, you don't want them crispy like you would sometimes with just you know carrots as a side dish or whatever. You want the same kind of consistency throughout your dish. And I'm sure I have meant, I know for a fact I mentioned during my buttermilk pie video how much I absolutely hate to make a pie crust. My solution to that is right here, and this is puff pastry. And when it gets closer to time for me to pull everything together and get the dish all made up, I'll explain to you why I have the puff pastry as opposed to the a regular pie crust. And to be honest, if I'm making pot pie, and I've done it this way before, where I use pie crust, but I make individual little pies. I don't like one giant pie that you're trying to cut up and make sure that everybody gets the same amount of crust and whatnot. And I know I'm probably making my husband nervous because I talk with my hands and I talk with my hands with a knife in my hands, but he hasn't, he, he has survived for 22 years. So he may survive a little bit longer, who knows. Anyway, I'm gonna finish cutting this up. I'm gonna get the carrots and onions boiling and I will be back very soon. Action. Okay. My carrots are just starting to show some signs of being tender. And I take one spoon, push it against another spoon, and it kind of cuts through it. It's still a little tough. There's still a little bit of um, fighting me, I guess, for lack of a better way of saying it. So it is now time to add my potatoes. And I'm pretty sure I said it this way earlier. I hope I said it right. Now my brain is going, what did you say? Pretty sure that I said carrots take longer to cook than potatoes or potatoes cook faster. If I didn't say that before, forgive me because that's what I meant to say. And I'm gonna let this continue to boil for about 15 minutes. When it's done, I'm going to pour off all that water and save my vegetables because all of this is going into my pot pie base. So I said earlier that, I mean, this is turkey pot pie, but I don't like the pie crust. I don't like making them. And for this one, I do a special treat that my family really likes and we really enjoy eating it this way. I am, 
cutting some puff pastry and I'm cutting it into about each sheet into about nine pieces and then I usually give each person two pieces when they are when they put their bowl together and then we just put this on top of the pot pie. I don't do any special, I don't brush the top, I don't do anything like that. Just put it on the pan. I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees and this is gonna bake for 15 to 20 minutes, just until the tops are really nice and golden brown. Why, and while this is baking, it works out perfectly because about the time it takes for this to bake is the same amount of time it takes for me to get the base of the pot pie, all that inner goodness that you would be eating if you were eating two pie crusts, top and bottom, all put together and blended and ready to eat. So give me just a minute and we will get this in the oven and I'll show you what the next step is. All right, I have in my pan here, I have added three tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon of flour because I'm making a roux. This is kind of like a gravy. If you've ever had chicken or turkey pot pie or even beef pot pie, it's a, it's a gravy. The filling is like that. This is two cans of cream of chicken soup. You could do cream of mushroom, cream of celery if you like. I just prefer the flavor that cream of chicken gives me. I'm mixing that in. Now that's just not doing a whole lot, but getting even thicker. So I'm going to add in two and a half cups of milk. So that gets started thinning down. See, isn't that better? But I'm also going to add a cup of water because this will get really thick really fast. Just realized my oven got turned off for some reason. We need that oven at 400, don't forget that, okay? But I'm adding this cup of water. By the way, my burner is on about medium high right now because I want this to start mixing together pretty quickly. You can see right here, my carrots and potatoes and onions, they're all done. And the reason this is sitting on top of this pitcher is because, like I've said, in other videos, I save my water. Anytime I boil something, I save my water so I can use it on my plants. I could have conceivably used some of this water in here. I just didn't know how much there was and I just didn't pull with it. So, I have my spice mix here. This is two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of garlic, and two teaspoons of thyme leaves. You could do ground thyme as well, but I'm using thyme leaves for this one. I just think thyme is the absolute best flavor to mix in with any kind of poultry. It just brings out such an amazing flavor in the poultry that that's my go-to when I'm seasoning chicken or turkey or any other fowl. We had Cornish hens a while back and I use it on those too. You're gonna wanna watch your roux because it could get a little thicker than you want it to and that's fine, just add more water, thin it down. Now, again, when someone asked me a while back, thank you Mary Ann, about being economical, feeding a big family, that turkey is giving us three meals because I have enough turkey left that I'm gonna freeze it and then sometime down the road, I'm gonna make another turkey pot pie and everything's, the turkey part, the hard part is already done. This bag is a bunch of leftover vegetables. A lot of times when we have leftovers, people will eat the meat, they make sandwiches or whatever, but they don't eat the leftover vegetables. So I save them and I put them in a bag and then and I freeze them. I just keep the bag in the freezer. And oh, okay, we've got some peas left over. Throw the peas in the bag. This one is mostly peas, which is fine. Um, but I noticed that. So I'm just going to throw this whole bag full of frozen vegetables in here. And I'm saving myself at least a can and a half 
that I would ordinarily have to get out of the pantry and use in my mix. I'm also adding in Here's my carrots and potatoes and onions. Got to have that flavor. Now, like I said, that bag was mostly peas, so I am going to drain a can of corn. Throw that in there too. I really like the flavor contrast between corn and, my hands are clean, I promise, between corn and that the thyme and the turkey, I don't know why, I just really like corn in all my soups and stews and all this stuff. And the last thing I'm adding here is my turkey. Now, you got to keep in mind if you're using those frozen vegetables, it's going to take this a little bit longer than if, if you don't have frozen vegetables, just add a can of peas. Don't worry about the frozen vegetables part. I think that actually had a little bit of green beans in it too, but who cares, right? It's a hodgepodge. So I'm going to stir this up. Once those frozen bits get all thawed out and start pulling in those flavors too, I'm going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes. However long it takes for those puff pastries to get done is how long I'm going to let my dish here simmer. And you can see, Chris, can you get a close-up on that? Look at all those beautiful, wonderful seasonings and all the vegetables coming together. You can already see that some of those peas are coming up and pulling out of that frozen block. And this is just where I have to pay attention because, you know, hitting it here, hitting it there. Look, I'm knocking some peas off of the frozen block so that that warmth of the rest of it can get to it. It shouldn't take long. I would say within five minutes, I would have this whole frozen block unfrozen. You can take it out and thaw it first too. You don't have to do it like I am and dump it in here. But it's really convenient if I'm putting together a stew first thing in the morning in the crock pot before I go to work. Throw that frozen block in there by the time I have lunch. I come home for lunch. Come in, stir it up. The rest of the day it just sits there and simmers and it's ready whenever. And this is a good dish too for whenever. My kids are, my boys are in and out today. Abby, I don't think Abby's coming home today, but the boys are in and out today. They're gonna eat at different times, and all they have to do is just come in and warm it up or eat it as soon as it's done. It doesn't really matter because this dish holds its flavor beautifully, and everybody loves it. Oh my goodness, my guys eat huge portions of this, which is why I'm using the whole package of the puff pastry instead of just one sheet like I would do during the school year when not everybody's at home. And that block of frozen stuff is already almost thawed, so I'm gonna get my um, puff pastry in the oven, and when it's all done and all ready to go, I will show you what it looks like. All right, my timer just went off. That was crazy timing. And I'm gonna take the puff pastry out so you can see how pretty this is. You want it a nice, golden brown and those look good and do you love these bowls my mother and i kind of went crazy last fall and we found all these on sale for like a dollar and 75 cents a piece so we bought a whole set of fall dishes and i figured since i got my heart broken this morning when i opened my email from target and saw that they had a back to school ad and we still don't know what back to school is going to look like that I would uh, make myself happy and use my fall bowls since fall's my favorite time of year. Here's how I serve this. I'm gonna come over here and look at this, y'all. Doesn't that look amazing? Turning it off. After it all melded for probably about the first five minutes, I had it on medium high. I then turned it down to medium low and just let it simmer for the rest of the time that we waited on the puff pastry to cook. You need to make sure that you are stirring this the entire time. I mean, you don't have to stand over it and stir, but make sure that you're stirring it, paying attention to it, because what'll happen is all your heavy stuff will go to the bottom and you'll end up with all this big clump of goodness that could possibly stick though. And you definitely don't want it to stick because that's a heartbreaker. So. 
pretty fair size amount in my bowl. I'd say that's what. <laughs> Move stools out of the way. Chris, folks. there's a step stool. Y'all, if you ever do anything like this, make sure that you get the step stools and things out of your way. So, cup and a half, two cups of the mix. This this is falling apart in my hand. Just put a couple of these on the top so that when you go to eat it, just stick that spoon in there, break it all up. I like to break it up bite by bite and then, you know, get a big bite of the mixture from the inside too. It's still steaming, look at that. Not look good. Mm. Chris, your wife can cook. I'm Slightly. serious. Hmm? Slightly. A little bit. Been yeah. doing it for you for 22 years. We so. bit. Yeah, that's why your boys are so big. All right, y'all try this recipe. Let me know how it works out for you. And remember, spices are subjective. Salt as much as you want, pepper as much as you want, add, take away from what I'm telling you. This is just what I do, you do you.